Okay, so as has been mentioned several times, in order to add and subtract fractions, they have to have a common denominator. All right, and to achieve that common denominator, first of all, you've got to decide what the least common denominator is. Technically, you can do more than the least common denominator, uh, but we want to try and keep it to the least common denominator. What I mean by that is for A, we could, the easy way out would be to multiply the first one by six and the second one by three. And we would have had a common denominator of 18. Uh, we would have just had more simplifying to do in the end. So if we go for the least common denominator, a lot of times you don't have to worry as much about simplifying. <clears throat> Once you have the common denominator, then you add or subtract the numerators. The denominator does not change. It does not change after you have that LCD. And then you just need to look and see how to simplify. So A, there was some simplifying to do. They simplified to 3 over 2. B, there was no simplifying. After you subtracted 5 over 12, that's as simple as it'll go. Uh, C, we can combine obviously more than just two fractions. So the LCD was 12. Notice we multiplied each one of these by something different. to the rational expression part. Okay, so what we are going to do today is add and subtract rational expressions. Now we're not really going to split it up like we did um, with the multiplying and dividing because the only thing different with subtraction is the sign. Um, so we're going to kind of do those together. <clears throat> but I'm going to try and show you enough examples but not too many to bore you but just to make sure you've got this because it really is different from anything you've ever done before. Okay, you probably did this in math three, but you probably already had common denominators. You probably didn't have to worry too much about getting a common denominator. If you did, great, you're ahead and you should be fine today. All right, here's our first example. We want to add four over x plus two plus seven over x minus three. We want to put those together. Now, this is one of the hardest things I think to, it can be difficult to get across. You got to figure out, well, what is this denominator missing that the other denominator has, and vice versa? Except these x's, they don't have those in common. Okay, yes, they both have an x, but think about it like we did with multiplying and dividing. This x is attached to the x plus or to the plus two. This x is attached to the minus three. So they're they're the same number is what they're representing, but x plus two has a different value. Than so, if you want to write the LCD out to the side, you can, you don't have to, uh, but in this case it is x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, that is going to be our least common denominator. So, that means the first one is missing the x minus 3 part, so we've got to multiply it top and bottom by x minus 3. The second one is missing the x plus 2 part, so we need to multiply it top and bottom by x plus 2. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, just to save myself some space and time, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 4. 4x minus 12 plus, I'm going to distribute the 7, 7x plus 14. Those were both over the common denominator, x minus 3 times x plus 2. The order that you write that in really doesn't matter, okay? Just so you have x minus 3 and x plus 2 in there. Okay, uh, the last thing we have to worry about is combining like terms. Combine the 4x and the 11x, excuse me, the 4x and the 7x to get 11x, and the negative 12 plus 14 to get positive 2. At this point, the only other thing is to ask, can I factor that numerator so that it would cancel with something in the denominator? The answer to that is no, okay, not on this one. 
to know factoring that can be done. Oh, thank you, Chase. I wrote three. That's what happens when I start talking and writing at the same time. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. I would leave it in factored form. You can, but kind of like yesterday, I would just leave it. Okay? Let's look at one that's a little bit more involved. Okay? Look at one that's a little bit more involved. Negative x over x squared plus 3x plus 2 minus negative x minus 3 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, I didn't do this in the last problem because we really couldn't. There was nothing to be factored in the last problem. But you should factor these denominators because what if they share something, okay? If they share something, we can make life a little bit easier on ourselves. So I'm just going to do it right below where they already are so that I don't have to waste more space on my paper, okay? x squared plus 3x plus 2 factors into x plus 2 times x plus 1. x squared plus 5x plus 6 factors into x plus 3 times x plus 2. So check it out. They do have something in common. They both have x plus 2. So we don't have to worry about that part. Okay? They already have that in common. We're just concerned about the other parts. Now, do you see another way that maybe I could make this a little bit more simple of a problem? Look at that second numerator. It's negative x minus 3. If I factor out a negative 1, we're left with x plus 3. And we can cancel that because it's in the same fraction. Okay, Only because it's in the same rational expression can we cancel that. So since we've kind of done a lot of stuff here, I am going to rewrite the problem just so that I, um, I don't get confused. <clears throat> so I've got negative x over x plus 2 times x plus 1. Now, I'm subtracting negative 1. Subtracting a negative is really the same as adding a positive. So I'm going to make my life a little bit easier there, too. Okay, subtracting that negative 1 is the same as adding positive 1, so just made life a little bit easier. Okay, so they still have x plus 2 in common. The only thing that's missing in order to add these together is that this second rational expression does not have x plus 1 in its denominator. And we've got to multiply it, denominator and numerator, because technically, by doing that, we haven't changed this expression. We haven't changed anything. We're just rewriting it so it works for us. Okay, so now we have common denominators. So that means that we can combine our numerators. So we've got negative x from the first numerator. It's a plus. Multiplying x plus 1 by 1 doesn't change anything. It's just x plus 1. Now, we don't want to cancel the x plus 1's. What were you saying to cancel, Carter? The x. Okay, yeah. We can't do that because there's plus right here. But we can combine some like terms in the numerator. Negative x plus x is 0. Okay, negative x plus x is 0. All we're left with in the numerator is 1. Okay, all we are left with in the numerator is 1. And that is our final answer. Okay. And that is one of the most common mistakes that I see on these is when people combine, they want to start canceling. You gotta put all your terms together first and then see if anything will cancel. Okay? 
Let's do a few more. So another subtraction problem. One that stays a subtraction problem. X minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6 minus x minus 2 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. <clears throat> All right, every time we want to start with factoring. x squared plus x minus 6 is x plus 3 times x minus 2. Yeah. Done a lot. I've probably done millions of factoring problems, probably. All right, the second denominator, x plus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, and the numerators don't have anything in common with their respective denominators, okay? Yes, I realize that x minus 2 is in the second numerator, but it's not in the same rational expression, so we can't cancel it with that x minus 2 in the first denominator. All right, so they have x plus 3 in common. So we only have to worry about the fact that the first one is missing an x plus 1. And the second one is missing x minus 2. So we've got x plus 1 in both denominators, x plus 3 in both denominators, and x minus 2. We're good. We have common denominators. So we need to put their numerators together <clears throat> and combine like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these factors out at the same time as I put them together. So x plus 1 times x minus 1 is x squared minus 1. I really, I foiled it, but I know that every single time the outside and the inside of that are going to cancel. Okay, x plus 1 times x minus 1 is the factored form of the difference of perfect squares. If you've got to multiply, if you've got to foil it all the way out, that's fine. Now, here's the other place that most, this is the number one most common mistake with these, is when you are subtracting, you need to immediately put a set of parentheses after that subtraction sign. <clears throat> because that negative has got to be applied to everything in that second numerator. So I'm going to multiply it out first, then I'm going to apply the negative. So x times x is x squared. The outside gives me negative 2x. The inside gives me negative 2x. So I've got negative 4x for the middle term. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. <clears throat> so I've multiplied out my two numerators. I have combined them into a single numerator. I just need to copy down my common denominator, x plus 1, x plus 3, x minus 2. Now I'm going to apply that negative to everything from the second numerator. So it becomes negative x squared plus 4x minus 4. And just because this is how my brain wants it to be, I'm going to write that as x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 3. I like numerical order. It really doesn't matter. That's just me being weird. Alrighty. So let's combine like terms. I've got x squared minus x squared. Those go away. Uh, nothing to go with my 4x. And negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 3 in my denominator. And we're finished. 4x minus 5 doesn't factor. It has nothing in 